How well are we doing to break the link between social class and education? Hi guys, I believe that social class does have a considerable impact on education. Within our school curriculum, pedagogy and assessment, there are rules that value certain types of knowledge, behaviour and aspirations over others. And these are particularly seen from those of the middle classes. So whilst disadvantaged communities have their own rich and viable cultures, these cultures do not carry the educational codes or rules that are valued in schools. However, through my readings, I have discovered that researchers believe that there is a similar range of ability between these classes, which means that differences in educational achievement are not due to um, differences in intelligence, but are rather due to factors such as teachers' low expectations, low aspirations, and the economical issues that occur between or in this um, lower social class. So, as a consequence, this has led to the formation of class hierarchies. So, children from working class backgrounds tend to experience lower class power um, as a result of their interrelated resources of cultural, social and economical capital. To develop empowering pedagogy, I believe that educators are doing their best efforts to ensure that cultures of the disadvantaged are not undervalued or silenced in schools. Um, throughout my professional experiences, I saw teachers creating positive classroom co uh, cultures or climates um, by making explicit the rules and expectations of this cultural power. For example, in relation to Hattie's work on feedback, students were able to work together with the teacher to seek answers um, as to how they, how they are going, where they are going, and where they need to go to next, which in, um, which in consequence, were, they were able to construct an ideal learning environment. In addition, I saw teachers working with students' virtual school bags through a range of strategies such as um, engaging in inquiry-based learning that aim to bring um, the students' own questions and, to the forefront of learning. So, yeah, I really believe that that was a good strategy that, you know, all of us could bring to our own classroom. Um, generally, I still believe that there is a long way to go in closing this gap as there still appears to be a number of um, educators and people within society who are engaging with the stereotypes of different students where they see um, these differences as deficits and they are placing those deficits or you know they're placing blame on the students which is not fair you know just because a student might grow up in a low socioeconomic uh, background it's not like their fault you know that's the kind of environment that they've brought up in they've been brought up in so um, I believe that as educators we need to personally address cultural um, power um, or address the cultures of power in our classrooms and recognise and value the diversity of cultural capital of our, um, the cultural capital of our students. You know, we really need to value our students and what they bring to the forefront of our classroom because, you know, um, often students' differences help us to learn and we can learn from different people and yeah, if we work together, it should, should be good.